Hey guys, Crew of Blind Wave back, I'm Calvin. And I'm Rick. And we are here with the spoiler review of Brightburn. Yep. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, do not watch this. We're going to be deep diving into very specific parts of the movie where if you want to watch the movie, it's definitely going to spoil it, so don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so seeing the trailer for this... It's, you know, Superman gone bad, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, he is a boy that gets Superman powers, and instead of going for justice and peace, he goes for selfishness and killing everyone he knows and loves. Yes. Um, he is very powerful. He is very scary. <laughs> like, if, if you imagine any, like, kid going through puberty or something like that, you know, acting out against their parents and stuff like that, but with the powers of Superman. It is terrifying. <laughs> it is terrifying. Um, and this is clearly Superman. Yes. Like, the, they make no qualms about it. Anything they, but name. Yeah. I mean, especially name and stuff like that, because they will get in a lot of trouble if they say Superman. <laughs> but, um... But they live in Kansas. Yeah. They're farmers, or at least the dad is a farmer. Um, and both of the parents' names are one letter after Superman's parents' names. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice. <laughs> yeah. That's good. So, uh, Lori okay. instead of Martha, mm -hmm. and um, Kyle instead of Jonathan, right? Jonathan Kent, yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That makes sense. And, and of course, Brandon Brightburn, Clark yeah. Kent. Which I did, don't have my Berserk symbol. <laughs> it is very similar to the, Berg, the Berserk brand, yes. right? Yes. So that was the thing of like, that Berserk symbol is supposed to be two Bs put together. Yeah. Uh, which I can kind of see, but kind of not. Yeah. But yeah, so this movie starts out with a bang. Like, it wastes no time. Yeah. Uh, his parents are having trouble conceiving. Mm hmm And within the first minute of the movie, his pod comes down from space. Yes. Lands... In the barn or in the field? It was in the woods, yeah. <laughs> and then hard cut to... Montage of him montage growing up. Montage of him growing up, as, yeah. As just a normal kid. Like, they, they don't even find the pod. We, we see that later in a dream. But, yeah, just, you know, loving family, happy life, mm -hmm. and everything like that. And then, yeah, just, just into puberty and stuff yeah, like that. We cut ten years, and it's sort of a... Coming of age story, which yeah. could have been really interesting, um, but I don't think they handled it very well because basically he had his twelfth birthday, the pod glue red, and he became evil. Yeah. So it awoken something in him or possessed him. It wasn't really clear exactly what happened. I think it would have been more interesting personally if he just discovered these powers when he hit adolescence yeah. and was trying to deal with them being, you know, a coming of age and instead, like, chose selfishness and evil mm -hmm. instead of being possessed by this thing. Like, I, I would have liked to have seen that journey. Felt, yeah, it almost felt like he was brainwashed into being evil, where I don't feel like it's as compelling a story, mm -hmm. because it takes the agency away from our title character. Um, it would have been, I think, more interesting if the pod had been damaged or something like that, and it hadn't. Uh, possessed him or brainwashed him or, or whatever. It, oh, oh. And then he found it later and then saw what it was supposed to do. And like, well, I want to be more powerful so that I can impress my friends or yeah. something like that. It, it would have been interesting. And it's more consuming. If it was like a voice in his head that was tempting him. Yeah. You know, or something like that, where he still had the choice, but it was like the devil on his shoulder. Yeah, And exactly. eventually he succumbed to it. Yeah. And started... And that way you could have thing. like... The angel on his shoulder being his parents, you yeah, know, t t talking reason, and his aunt as well, the school counselor. Sure, that would I think that would have been more interesting, but I think that would have gotten away in the way of all the cool action and <laughs> power scenes that we saw. I mean, that could have just been the third act. Like in this movie, uh, I think they were afraid the audience was going to be bored, so they really sprinkle his kill scenes throughout. Yeah, they do. Um, which I, I prefer a slow burn mm -hmm. in my horrors for the most part, except for like a Friday the 13th or something, yeah. where there's just not enough going on interesting. But I think this could have really been an interesting story with interesting characters, because I thought the actors were fantastic. The, yeah, the actors are fantastic, which if you haven't seen who was cast, um, and I don't know their names exactly, but it's um, Pam's fiancé from The Office, 
It is Badger from Breaking Bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> it is, oh shoot, I can't remember her name, uh, from Slither. I can't remember her name, but yeah. Yeah, I, I can't remember anybody's actors' names. But, um, oh, and also, um, at the end. <laughs> shoot. I can't remember the name. Never mind. Sorry. I'll have to look it up. Doesn't even have him listed in the cast. Well, talk about that later. It's taking too much time. I thought the kid did a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, he was very creepy. Uh, yeah. He, he was, um, before he got possessed, which didn't last very long, but he seemed just like a normal kid. Yeah. You know, like, a sort of geek. Like, he was really intelligent and stuff. Yeah. Which I wonder if that was part of the powers as well, because Superman's supposed to have super intellect. Yeah. As well. So I wonder if that was just a coincidence that he was also just really smart. Um, but yeah, it, it was kind of a sad story because his parents seemed like good parents. Yeah. But he just sort of turned into this evil thing. It might have been interesting if they were bad parents. Yeah. As well, you know, and like he got these powers and that's why he turned. Yeah. So something could have been interesting. Um, but as far as what the movie actually accomplished as well, I think... Um, there is sort of a sense of dread anytime the kid's around. Yeah. Uh, I think his costume is pretty effective. He's got this, like, <laughs> sack boy uh, from Trick or Treat, like, style knitted mask yeah. thing. Well, it's his blanket that he arrived to Earth in. The the red blanket, which he wears as a hood and cape, and cape. a la Superman style. Mm -hmm. um, and the way he, like, made eye holes and lace it up kind of like a mind flare kind of mask looking yeah, thing. It like was, a Cthulhu. It was very creepy. Um, it, <laughs> it looked like creepy. the lacing across the front was like a mouth or teeth, jaws and stuff. So that was very creepy whenever he was just in the dark somewhere. <laughs> yeah, he's got this very good like emotionless face. Yeah. Well, when he's like threatening people, like the ant and things, he just has this blank face, mm -hmm. which is really well done on it's, his part. It's disconcerting mm -hmm. very much. Um, like, I want more human emotions from this kid, you know, like anger and and just juvenility. And I don't see any juvenility. Like, he's he seems like like an adult in a kid's body that's, yeah. that's like... Trying to hide, you know? Yeah. I mean, you see it a few times, like when he throws the tantrum when his dad won't let him yeah. have the gun, and when he throws his dad across the kitchen mm -hmm. and things. So you see it a few times, but when he's in, like, kill mode, yeah. you, you never see that. Yeah, he's so much more mature, and I think that's what, like, the creepy factor amps up, because you see someone, something that, you know, is very aware of what he's doing, mm -hmm. and it's, it's not acting out. You know, he's doing this intentionally, and premeditatively <laughs> and it's terrifying yeah this movie's um kills were very creative pretty mm -hmm. much almost any way you can think of how would superman kill someone they do it in this movie yeah um, it was basically just a showcase of like injustice fatalities yeah pretty much <laughs> so you have him heat visioning uh exploding someone's head mm -hmm. you've got him picking like someone up like flying them high up and then just letting them drop yeah to their death. Uh, you also have that with the uh, Badger's truck. Yeah. As well, which was really good. The uncle. <laughs> his jaw just came apart. Uh, that's terrible. That's why you always wear a seatbelt, kids. <laughs> so that your face doesn't slam into the steering wheel and tear your jaw off. I didn't understand why when he was around, like, the lights flickered and the glass broke in uh, the diner. Like, I didn't understand what power that was exactly I'm not sure um I mean I felt like it was just some kind of like aura or radiance of like his power his energy and stuff but I don't know like the the door on the the freezer in mm -hmm. the diner um did he rip that off with telekinesis or did he rip that off by hand I think so he Beamed it in the middle. Yeah. And then I think he, like, grabbed it and went back really fast with it. So, yeah. like, he, he instead of doing, like, this, he just held it and, like, jumped backwards. Yeah. So that's why we didn't see him, maybe? I don't know. Maybe. It just seemed like the doors, like, bent in and then ripped off and fell down, and he was he was just there. Like, he... I 
conceivably. He definitely could have moved fast enough. I just, I don't know. And I didn't understand how all the brands appeared in the diner. Like, they were hundreds of them. Yeah. That just well, appeared all of a sudden. He did those. When? Um, when she was, like, counting the money and stuff, she turned around and you could hear, like, a whole bunch of fingers on white glass. Oh, uh, okay. That's when I it missed happened. that. Yeah. Okay. It was hard to hear in the theater. <laughs> um, not for, you know, being noisy or anything like that, but, like, it was quieter than I would have liked. Yeah. Uh, it was subtle, which kind of amped up the creepy factor. Like, it puts you in the shoes of the person in the diner, which mm-hmm. I can't remember her name. But it's the mother of the girl that he's angry at or interested in. His crush. Whatever. His crush. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you almost don't hear it. So, you know, she turns around and is like, oh, what's that? Kind of thing. But, yeah. Just the speed and dexterity. It's it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sure is. And talking about, like, the sound design. I really didn't like the score in this movie. No. I would call it distractingly generic. It was a lot of just the Inception sounds. The the big, deep, booming horns yeah. and stuff like that. I I definitely understand they can't use any kind of Superman music or anything like that. No. And as far as I know, this is the first time that we've ever had like a, like a bizarro Superman. So, I mean, on... On screen, I should say. So we don't have any like pre-established themes sure. for him. But I just. But I feel like. I feel like it, it it could have been done better. Yeah. But I don't know exactly how. I mean, a lot of horror movies now are just sort of that low droning yeah. tones and orchestra strings. And, like, I, I miss the time when horror movies had themes. Yeah. Like, The Exorcist and Halloween and things. Like, yeah. those are, aren't are just droning sounds, but they still managed to be so creepy and they yes. add so much to the scenes. Definitely. I would have liked something like that. Yes. I agree. Um, that is one thing, like, the music is very, very, very forgettable. I can't remember even, even a time where I was like, huh, I can hear the music right now. I can't remember what that music was. Yeah. Like, it was it was mostly just loud horns and, you know, tremolo strings mm-hmm. and really high pitches. <laughs> um, and and that music is, is specifically engineered to make your body feel stressed. Yeah. So that you're stressed watching the movie and it amps up the, the scare factor. Um, I which like, I get. Sure. But yeah. I don't necessarily appreciate it when it's... It's so obvious that I can't ignore it. Yeah. I mean, this movie had such a great child actor and premise and was creepy enough. Like, it, I don't think it needed to rely on orchestra stings mm-hmm. and jump scares as much as it did. Because, um, you know, they do jump scares because they're effective. Yeah. And in some movies, they get me. But yeah. not a single one in this got me because they were just so obvious. Yeah. Or, like, the one that might have was in the trailer. Yes. That, and that was that was very disappointing for me. Most of the jump scares and stuff that that would have gotten me were already in the trailer, and that's that's one thing I feel like is more the downfall of of trailers in general now is where they put like key moments and stuff in the trailer, so I know to expect them or I know that they're still coming. Yeah, and it's unavoidable. But especially in this one, the the scene where he's hovering and then he flies at the lady in the in the freezer. Mm-hmm. It's like I wasn't surprised at all. <laughs> I, I wasn't even scared because then I was like, okay, this is when this happens. Yeah. And I waited instead of like, oh, what's gonna happen? Ah. Uh! Yeah. And, and I don't think this movie needed it. Like I think the kid was creepy enough mm-hmm. and his abilities were terrifying enough that you, you you didn't need those things. So I was a little disappointed by that. Yeah. And they didn't, like, use his speed enough, I feel. Like, sometimes, yes, definitely. But they they use the trope of, like, lights going out and the person that you want to live not being able to see mm-hmm. and the lights coming back on and he's gone. Where they could have just done that when the lights were still on. Sure. To show, like, even if you can see him, you can't do anything about it. Yeah. And I... I don't know, I felt like that was a missed opportunity 
to both show, you know, the, the extent of his powers and also to switch up what I was expecting to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody, you know, when you're in a dark tunnel or something like that and your light starts flickering and you know there's somebody following you, you know, you bang in your flashlight and you know as soon as the flashlight comes on, he's going to be right there, yeah. you know? But I, I would have liked to have seen more, um, just something to subvert my expectations. Uh -huh. I would have liked them to subvert my expectations more rather than showing me everything I needed to know and then just keep going with that same trope. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's still creepy and everything. It, it's it's definitely a horror movie, so mm -hmm. I get that, but I, I felt like it, it played it too many times sure. for it to be effective in the last few times that I saw it. I agree. And so the movie largely focuses on the parents and mm -hmm. how they're dealing with this. Um, early on, the dad is suspicious that Brandon might be involved in all these terrible things, and the mom is defending him to the end. Yeah. Um, and uh, I thought that was really well done for the yeah. most part. Uh, I believed their relationship and their relationship with Brandon, and I believed a lot of times up until the end, like how they were dealing with the situation mm -hmm. and things and how they were, were reacting. I was like, well, you know, she, you know, it was established that she really wanted kids and this was like a gift from God. Yeah. And she just. This was her chance. Yeah. To be a mother, and she wasn't going to give it up for anything. Yep. Which made complete sense. Yeah. Um, they definitely felt like a real family. Mm -hmm. I was, I was very impressed at how well all the actors felt together. Like, when they were in a room, it felt like a family. Yeah. Um, but and then I was... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I was especially disappointed by the ending. Yeah. Because it seemed like they realized that Brandon was evil and unredeemable. Mm hmm And I'm not sure how they came to that conclusion, necessarily. Um... I mean, obviously he did evil things in the movie, yeah. but they didn't know that he was getting possessed by the thing, I don't feel like. Like, she knows that he was sleepwalking, I guess, but... Yeah. Well, she described it to Brandon like he was sleepwalking, but then later when she talked to Kyle, she was like, I don't know, it was like it was calling to him. He was in a trance and, like... You know, banging at the trap door and yeah. stuff like that. So I, I think, know. I think she maybe knew there was something else going on more than just sleepwalking. It seemed like they gave up on him too soon. Like if I were the parents, I would have tried to destroy the pot. Yeah, first, definitely. Um, to see if that did anything, or you know, to to have conversations with him. I'm like, okay, you are Superman. You have these powers. You need to use them responsibly. Like you can be use a, them for good. Yeah, you can be a good for this world. Like they never had that talk with them. No, they didn't. They, I don't know. They kind of swept it under the rug as much as they possibly could. Sure. And I feel like as as soon as the conversation came up about the pod and everything like that, it's like, well, maybe we shouldn't be having the birds and the bees talk with them. Maybe we should be having a great power comes great responsibility <laughs> talk. Yeah. And I don't feel like that would have been. You know, out of place yeah. with, with these parents. They were well aware of his origins, and and after he started doing these great things, like they were aware, you know, he is very different and he is very dangerous mm -hmm. in this volatile state. Being the parents for this kid for, you know, 13, 14 years. Yeah. Or how old is he? He's is he twelve? Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Okay. It was his twelfth. Twelfth birthday. birthday. Yeah. Um, I feel like they would have tried harder to to yeah. break through to him. Um, after all, they were they were so very happy mm -hmm. to have this kid, and especially the dad. The dad, like, as soon as he said, "I'm gonna go camping with him this weekend and show him how much I love him," I was yeah. like, "Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's dark." Yep, that was dark as hell. But I, I can see where the desperation came from. You know. He's like, well, I, I can't talk to my wife about it. Sure. You know, she closes down, and, and she's blaming me for for what's happening kind of thing. And, you know, I can't talk to Brandon because he's, like, closed off, and he's angry at me, and he's killing people. You know, he, he believes that he's killing people, and he is. But I feel like 
maybe they would have tried harder yeah. if it were if it were their real child rather than this isn't my child anymore and I'm going to kill it kind yeah. of thing. Like they were first time parents, you know, this is their first child and you know, they didn't know how to handle adolescence and puberty and stuff like that. It's like, how are they going to handle this? <laughs> so I, I get that. I don't know. I, I feel like it was just a real quick jump <laughs> yeah. from Definitely. birds and the bees talk to I have to kill it. Yep. <laughs> and, the woods. and that decision has pretty much fucked the bright burn world. Yeah. Because now, like... He is just evil. Yeah. And it's going to be irredeemable because, like, well, my parents tried to kill me. Yeah. Fuck everybody. Yeah. And so, yeah, in this movie, he, he kills both parents. Mm -hmm. uh, he kills everyone and just goes, and you see new, news footage of him wrecking Brightburn. Yeah. Brightburn and beyond. Um, you know, his, his sphere of influence started spreading into, like, Missouri and, and, don't remember. I can't remember. But there were several news clips at the end. But I saw that and I was like, huh, I wonder if there's going to be a sequel to this. And then at the very end. Yeah. Uh, mid credit scene. <laughs> that I was surprised about that. And I'm very happy that they put that in. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically like a, like a conspiracy theorist guy mm -hmm. ranting on, on the news or an internet site or whatever. And he's talking about all these these beings with superpowers and yep. stuff like that and they're destroying things so we had a uh, mention of a fish boy that's killing a bunch of people and a powerful woman that chokes people with ropes yeah. and stuff which immediately aquaman mm -hmm. and wonder woman wonder woman so <laughs> i think they're definitely going like a bizarro yeah it, dc dcu yeah <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm very excited Which, for. Which I don't know if that's just like the stinger at the end. It could be. Or if they actually plan on making more of these. I would be very excited to see more of them. Yeah. Like <laughs> like the, the Injustice League. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> and I'm not super familiar with, with DC Comics or Bizarro World or anything like that. Or what was the other one that you said earlier? Um, like the... The Elseworld? Elseworld. Um, I'm not familiar with those at all. Like, pretty much all I know is stuff that Aaron and Eric talk about around here. Um, but, yeah, it would be fascinating to have all these movies and then do a time skip and then have the DCU versus these guys. Yeah. <laughs> that, would be, that would be amazing. It would be very creepy. And yeah. there were... Those are just the two that he mentioned, but there were... Six. There were six total... That, um, that were up on screen mm -hmm. and one of them I'm pretty sure was The Flash uh, one of them I couldn't tell but I thought it was Cyborg mm -hmm. and I couldn't specifically tell about the other ones, the other ones. which I assumed they would be Batman and Green Arrow uh, or Green Lantern or Green Lantern rather yeah so I, I don't know I don't know. Maybe, I want. I want to find out. It's, maybe we'll see. Maybe we will. <laughs> I'd be, like I said before, I'd be very, very interested and very excited to see more. Yeah. Of this because this was like a origin story for a superhero turned wrong, mm -hmm. and it became a supervillain origin story. Yeah. But I want to see those other origin stories. Maybe how they came about. And I want to see all these bad guys together. <laughs> as terrible as that sounds, like... It, it would be a fun movie. That's something that we haven't really seen before. You yeah. know, supervillains like that. I mean, we saw um, Suicide Squad and stuff like that, but not nearly on the level of sure. Superman. Not, not even close! <laughs> so yeah, overall, uh, I enjoyed the movie. I couldn't help but think of how it could have been better as I was watching mm -hmm. it just because the premise is so good. Yeah. But I still definitely enjoyed myself watching it. And uh, if you love horror movies, I would check it out. Yeah, definitely. Um, it felt a little heavy handed with the references and pointing things out to me. Like definitely the shot of the sheriff, like holding the one photograph and then holding the other photograph and holding that <laughs> photograph. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if there's a connection here. There's a lot of sledgehammer plot points yeah. in this. 
Which I feel like it didn't need. It didn't need it. Yeah. At all. Like, this like, movie was so close to being great. It, it was. And it was so close to movies that I've seen, you know, a hundred times before. I didn't need to, to be shown as much. Or, sorry, I didn't need to be told yeah. as much as I was shown. And I feel like the showing was just way too strong. I feel like it was made for an audience that wasn't paying attention or that didn't know. And I feel like anybody who would go to see this movie is going to be at least a little bit a DC fan and would or, understand. Or know who Superman is. Yeah. No, like, <laughs> everybody knows what Superman's... Yeah origin story is they can see the the correlations and stuff especially the the modern myth especially with the red cape and stuff like that and the flying and laser beams and stuff the the only thing i was slightly disappointed of and i don't know if superman even has anymore but that he didn't frost breath anyone and shatter them like sub-zero yeah (laughs) (laughs) I, i don't know if he does or not like he he used to just be able to blow really hard right i thought he had a frost breath at one point yeah he did but I'm, I'm thinking, like, back in the movies and stuff like that, he would put out fires by blowing yeah. them really hard. Um, I don't think... No X-ray vision in this, either. No X-ray vision in this. Not that we saw, anyway. Mm-hmm. Like... Which could have been interesting. Uh, it really would have been a Mortal Kombat and Justice thing where, like, he's, he's you're looking at it from his point of view as he, like, punches someone, and you see the yeah, X-ray. Yeah, the or, X-ray of the just... And everything yeah. going... Oh, man. <laughs> like uh, sn- uh, Sniper Elite. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. That would have been great. That would have been great. I would have I would enjoyed that. Um, a very, very creepy aspect to it of him, like, learning the human physiology. Um, mm-hmm. Like, you see his, what, you know, his parents assume at first to be, like, his spank bank. I was like, what is this? Is this his idea of porn and stuff like that? And they're flipping through and they're like, okay. This is a bit stranger, like anatomical yeah. drawings, and then get further, and there's like pictures of pictures organs. Of, of organs and like surgeries and stuff like that. It's like, well, maybe we should have a talk with them. And I, like, I understand from from their point of view, like you don't immediately assume the worst in that yeah. situation. But they're like, should we take him to a counselor? And their aunt is like, no, he's fine. This is just. This is just adolescence. You know, you get used to it. It's like, what does she know? Yeah. She doesn't have kids. And the talk with the dad that the dad gave him of, like, is talking about the birds and the bees. Yeah. It was, like, the worst advice ever. It was, he was the just worst. Like, you know, you're going to feel things about certain girls or, you know, m- maybe you in movies or in your class. Yeah. You should give in to those urges. Yeah. I feel like that <laughs> was the worst open-ended birds and the bees talk I have ever heard. It, it was close. So then immediately he goes to the girl's bedroom. Yeah. To play some sexy music and yeah. and get it on, I guess. I guess. Like apparently he's seen enough of porn to know what's going on. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was pretty That cool. was very cringy. Cringy, I would say like in an almost comical way rather than rather than like a dreading sort of way. Yeah. Like you you can see in the conversation where it's going to go. <laughs> from, from the way he said, like, you know, it's okay to give in to those urges. I'm like, oh my gosh, what are you thinking? <laughs> but this from, you know, someone who already knows what he's been doing and stuff like that. But stressful. Because <laughs> you want to tell these characters, like, no, stop. Don't do that. That's a bad idea. I like how he tried to talk people out of getting him in trouble it's like you know it's not going to go well for you mm-hmm. it's going to be very very bad for you but I couldn't tell if that was Brandon or if that was the alien possession yeah like if Brandon didn't want to get in trouble or if the alien possession didn't want to be found out uh, I wasn't entirely sure I wasn't sure either it felt like like Brandon was was keeping a secret almost like Dexter, in a way, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Like, you know, killing animals and stuff like that and hiding them. Like, that's what it felt like. But we didn't see enough from his perspective of why he was doing it and stuff yeah. like that. So to me, it's much less creepy, which is a little strange, maybe. Because normally, like, the scariest thing to me is, like, Lovecraft and these alien entities that are so powerful that humanity can't do anything about it. 
But yeah. to me, it was less creepy where it was almost like this demon alien was possessing this boy and it was that inside of this boy's body during the horror whereas it would have been creepier if it had just been the boy during the horror like the voice in his head like translating and stuff like that like I, I don't know how that awoke the power inside of him like there was there was definitely like a almost like a seizure or something when he was asleep Mm -hmm. when the pod came online the first time and that's when he started getting his powers and stuff so i don't know whether it was like rewriting his brain in some way it was it it reminded me of dragon ball where when goku comes down his pod he like the pod has brainwashed him in order to take over the world and he falls off the cliff, bumps his head, and gets amnesia and can't remember his mission anymore. Right. So it was kind of like, it told him, like, take the world, and, like, that was why he was sent there by these aliens or whatever to to Goku it up, Yeah, basically. And also in, in the beginning, like, when he was talking about the wasps, you know, there's one species of wasp that is, that is so much stronger than others, it forces other hives of wasps to raise its young Mm -hmm. I felt like okay now I immediately know what's you know what the the origin is you know they sent him here to be raised by humans yeah and then take over and isn't there a kind of wasp that injects into something and like that takes over its brain Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that's kind of what happened with Brandon as well almost yeah it's like a, a mind control Venom, almost. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also a type of ant that can do that. That I might think. be what I was thinking of. But I, I think there's a wasp that does it, too. I'm not sure. It's been a long time since high school. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, definitely, like, a creepy factor of, of, like, this wasn't an accident. You know, this wasn't, like, a civilization on the brink of disaster. The last remaining yeah. Kryptonian or whatever. This was just a, a concerted effort to take over the planet. Mm-hmm. And it definitely felt like humans are powerless in this. Yeah. Like, especially when the sheriffs showed up and they just got smashed into little <laughs> tiny bits inside this house. Um, very creepy. Very... Very disturbing. Yeah, he was just toying with everyone. Like, there was never a moment where he was in danger. Hmm. Other than, like, his mom was the thing. Yeah. About to stab him. The part of the capsule. Mm Mm-hmm. Which Which, is the only thing that hurt him. Yeah. Which, again, like, Kryptonian, you know, having that um, kryptonite versus Superman and stuff like that. Like, that was interesting. Um, But, I I don't know, I I feel like I would have played off that a bit more maybe um i don't know if it needed to be that was just something that i was like interested to see like oh where are they going to go with this you know Mm -hmm. they've already established you know it's the only thing that can cut him but uh i don't know i felt like that could have gone somewhere interesting to to maybe subvert my expectations a little more but it didn't yeah maybe that's on me for being disappointed in something that didn't happen rather than uh being excited about something that also didn't happen when he just killed his mom instead of getting stabbed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I was yeah, happy that the movie took a dark ending. Yeah. Like there was no happily ever after. Mm-mm. And th- I feel like that's something that is, isn't is done enough when it definitely could be. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes the bad guys do win in movies. <laughs> especially when they're Superman. Especially when they're Superman. <laughs> Thanks for watching this review, guys. If you want to check out the other review that we're doing this weekend, it's going to be Aladdin. Eric and Shane are doing that, so if you haven't seen it, check out the non-spoiler. If you have, it should be coming out today. Check out the spoiler review Go for to that. Patreon.com slash for movie review and uh, commentaries and reactions.